Okay, God. Hello, everyone. This is Fernando with Texas United Realty and uh, United Real Estate. Thank you for joining. Uh, today, uh, I'm your host, Fernando Loera, and to, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping, uh, helpful tips. <clears throat> if you guys are not receiving our emails from our office, you should at least be getting one a week. Uh, there's probably a problem where it's going into spam. You can always contact our office and we can help you with that problem. But you should at least be getting one email from us once a week as a minimum. Also, uh, we have a, a private um, uh, Facebook group that you can join. Here's the uh, QR code. Uh, you can scan it and, and join our group. Another thing is just a reminder of our uh, of uh, Elevate, which is our agent conference, uh, September 10 through the 12th at Walt Disney World. Uh, it would be great if you guys can join us. Uh, keep in mind, this is a business expense. Uh, another thing is, this is a great um, opportunity for you to meet other agents uh, that uh, you can interact with from all over the country. Okay, so today the agenda, we're going to be focusing on how to use the non-realty addendum form, um, also how to use uh, the lead-based addendum form, and followed by the HOA addendum form. <clears throat> and then we'll uh, show you some tips. So first of all, uh, here's the non-realty addendum form. Uh, and this form is used whenever uh, they want to convey <clears throat> some uh, appliances or some items from the house. It could be both internal or external. <clears throat> and usually, whenever you're going to be submitting an offer and you show the house as a buyer agent, you'll see things too in the property. You may see mounted TVs. You may see a freezer in the garage, you may see other things. And it's always <clears throat> good to contact the listing agent and ask them, hey, are these included in the property or are they being removed? If they say, oh yeah, you know, we're gonna, uh, that's part of the, you know, you offered us a good price, so we're gonna leave them there. It's always, always important to fill out this non-realty addendum. Uh, this will secure uh, between the buyer and the seller that this is being conveyed with the property. Uh, if you do not have this form, then it's real difficult for the buyer and you as a buyer agent to fight over a certain appliance or something and say, hey, well, the refrigerator uh, in the kitchen, you guys told me that it was part of the deal and, and the owner took it, you know, uh, especially when you did a walkthrough, that's when you usually get all these surprises. A walkthrough is done a day before the um, closing. And when you're walking around, you don't see no refrigerator. You're like, what happened? Well, if you don't have this form, it's kind of it's a contract, for example, and this is stating that this is going to be conveyed with the property. Another thing that we stress in our office as a broker is that at least put $1. Uh, we see a lot of forms that are always zero or sometimes they put not applicable. <clears throat> and it's it, this could affect your deal. For example, the lenders, when they see zero here, the lenders are assuming that the stainless steel refrigerator, the washer and dryer, they're all part of the financing. They're, they're part of the deal. And essentially, it seems like instead of you, you're, you're financing the house, Guess what? You're also financing the refrigerator and the washer and the dryer. But when you put a dollar in this field, that's say, stating that the seller sold to the buyer all these things for one dollar. Now the lender won't say anything. The lender will say, oh, OK, well, that's, you know, that's a deal, <clears throat> a good deal for the buyer. But it has nothing to do with the financing and in, in the in, in itself. So it's always uh, uh, helpful for you to always put something in here because I tend to see not applicable. I tend to see zeros. It's preferred that you put a something. One dollar is, is good to put. Another thing is to be very specific about the items. Uh, as you notice here, I wrote stainless steel refrigerator and kitchen. Oh, uh, that you can visualize and go, oh, okay. Uh, white washer and dryer in, in utility room. Mounted TV in the living room. 
white Kenmore freezer in the garage. You see how specific that is? Yes. Yeah, but... Where it's located. When, when you just write refrigerator, but what does that mean? Could I ask you a question yes, here, yes. please, Fernando? Um, so when I had done uh, some a few other deals in the past, it had mm. been stated to me that besides putting all this specific as you did, that I needed to be even more specific and put a model or serial number yep. if I could find it. Is that, do you agree? Yes, yep. we would uh, strongly suggest that too. Okay. Uh, and, and in particular, if there's two refrigerators, because mm -hmm. like me at home, I have three refrigerators. Okay. So if I was selling my house and you told me, Fernando, I'm buying your house and uh, I want a refrigerator. Well, which one is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because people tend to have either two. Usually I see people with two refrigerators and one freezer. Mm -hmm. That's what I usually see in people's houses. Oh, yeah. So. Okay. So you got to be very specific. So yes, if you can find serial numbers, model numbers, that's even better. Okay, thank you. Yes. And then uh, once you do that, then, you know, uh, you both buyer and seller sign it. Uh, typically, this form will submit it with the uh, offer in the beginning stages. So don't do this after the fact, because then it's harder to say, oh, I, I do want the refrigerator, or I do want this, or I do want that. So submit this with the initial offer. Okay, make it part of your packet. <clears throat> uh, the other form uh, that we uh, tend to see in contract compliance where it's always missing something, this is the lead-based form. Usually this form is uh, um, written whenever the house was built in 1977 or 76 or 75 and, and so on and so forth. Not a house that was built in 1978. That's also another thing that I've noticed, but it's 77 or below. And this is a required form, uh, required form, and it's federal law. It doesn't matter if if the investor is is flipping the house and he bought it at an auction. It doesn't matter. Wow, I thought Fernando that it, including 1978, I think. I've had one or two in yeah. years past and put included the 1970s. Yeah. You see, see here the word right here, built prior. Yes, I see that. It okay. Doesn't, it doesn't say build on 1978. Right? Yeah, or before. Yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah. So. Hello. Thank you for joining. Um, so yeah, so this form is for 1978. It's not for 1978 because this is built prior. Okay. So in order to fill this uh, form out, uh, is typically the seller will usually select B. Seller has no knowledge, and typically the seller will select has no reports or, re or records pertaining to. And one thing that we always always have to always go back and tell agents is they always forget to fill out paragraph C and paragraph D, always. It's very common. I don't understand why these are never filled out. Typically, the ones that we always choose is within 10 days, the buyer may conduct inspections if to see if there's any lead. The other one says buyer waives it, means that they're not gonna do it. But we always recommend them to do inspections. It's optional. Buyer acknowledgement. Buyer has received the pamphlet. This is really important too because I've noticed that some agents will fail to deliver that pamphlet. The pamphlet looks like this. And you can download it from the HAR site or dot loop or whichever, you know, it's on the internet. And this is a really important document. And they can in initial these too. Uh, in dot loop, uh, I did notice uh, the other day that you could put initials at the end of the page if you want to, or you can just have them initial it manually. But what this is saying is buyer has buyer has received the pamphlet, so that's really important. Another thing that we always uh, notice is that the other broker, which is the buyer agent, doesn't doesn't sign it. 
And so does not even the listing broker signs it. Only the buyers and the sellers. Well, here the listing broker has to sign it. And also you as the buyer agent has to sign it. So don't forget to sign it. Okay. I know everybody's busy in a rush, but we got to do that. Okay. And then the uh, last form is the homeowners association form. Um, this form, first of all, is a buyer formulated form. Whenever you, uh, I've been noticing that, that uh, um, listing agents will attach this form as a packet with the mud and all everything else, and they're not supposed to. As a listing agent, you're not supposed to attach this form because this is a buyer generated form. It's a negotiable uh, um, activity which must come from the buyer. Okay. Um, another thing is some people uh, forget to put in the information of the C of the uh, HOA, and they're like, uh, well, how do we find that information? Uh, you can go into Matrix, and when you go into Matrix, it's uh, towards the bottom, and here it says HOA, and there's the phone number and the HOA name. And that's where it's located. And that's what you put it in here. Okay. It's a matrix towards the bottom. And it says HOA. Okay. Uh, another thing is uh, you, you, as a buyer agent, you really need to talk to your, your buyers and go, guys, uh, what are you going to be doing at the property? Are you going to be, uh, you know, putting a metal shed? Are you going to be having chickens? Because now with the price of eggs have gone so up, uh, high, we started noticing that people are buying chickens to get their own eggs. Are you going to have a greenhouse uh, in the backyard? Are you, you know, we're starting to notice too that there's two families starting to move in to the same house because everything's so expensive. So they may have six cars or they want a swimming pool or they want a metal shed. There's all these things that as you're showing them houses as a buyer agent, ask them a lot of questions. And the reason why I say that is because it might be important to review the deed restrictions, which is the subdivision information, you know? And these are bylaws and rules of the association. What can they do and what they can't do? I was a listing agent for a, a land in Magnolia off of 149. Uh, and I the owner told me that the HOA deed restrictions did not allow Ford pickup trucks that were modeled the model number 350, 450, and 550. They allowed the 150s and the 250 models but they did not allow the 350, 450, 550. And it actually was written inside the bylaws. And I was like, wow. So I made sure to put an agent in the agent remarks. I even attached the deed restrictions. And I said, hey guys, make sure you read paragraph X regarding pickup trucks. Because I didn't want no issues in the future. And this is just land um, that I was selling. So uh, one thing that our broker recommends is have uh, in the first initial uh, offer is ask the seller to provide uh, within three days, or you can say five days, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but it, what matters is to provide seller the seller to deliver subdivision information to the buyer. And this allows the buyer to, uh, buyer may terminate the contract within three days after the buyer receives the subdivision information or prior to closing. And, and the reason why they can uh, back out is because they read something in the seller's disclosure that, you know, they're like, well, I don't agree to that. Okay. Another thing is if the buyer uh, does not receive this within three days, they can back out at any time and get their earnest money back. If the buyer, if the seller says, no, we don't want 
you know, to pay for it. If y'all want it, y'all get it. Well, there is another paragraph for that where the buyer can pay for that information and, and order it and, re and review it as well. Okay. Uh, paragraph three is just more if they already received it from the seller, you know, these things can happen. Uh, the one that everybody tends to pick all the time is paragraph four. Buyer does not require delivery of subdivision information. If you do pick, pick this one, uh, make sure that you go to the website of the HOAs and, you know, download uh, what you can and send it to the, the buyer so they can at least uh, read it um, at their leisure. Okay. And paragraph C, uh, we've noticed that in contract compliance that people tend to put uh, not applicable or, or all, or it says the word all, A-L-L. -L. Well, none of that uh, uh, belongs here because there's a dollar sign. Whenever you see a dollar sign, you have to put some money in here. Now, typically you can put 150 bucks, 250 bucks. In matrix, it's going to tell you uh, like here in this one right here, it says uh, $350. So then you would put $350 here. You don't have to put $350, but, <clears throat> you know, because th this form comes from the buyer first and it's negotiable. Uh, you can always start off at $150 and they can do counter offers and then they can say $350 and then you can do another counter offer and then you say $250 and so on and so forth. And then the last one is if there's additional um, subdivision information required by the title company and who pays the rest, we typically select seller to pay the title company the cost of uh, uh, obtaining information. Uh, so uh, I do see some deals where the buyer um, says that, you know, they'll pay. Um, and, and you can check both boxes too if you want. Okay. So we got that. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to our. So some tips. Uh, the HO form, HOA form is a buyer form that needs to be filled out by the buyer first. And, and I suggest submit it with the offer, the initial offer. If you are the listing agent, you should not fill out this HOA form. Okay. You can fill out the MUD form, the seller's disclosure. Well, you're not supposed to fill it out, but attach the seller's disclosure. Um, on the non-realty addendum, you should at least contain $1 and not zero, zero. <clears throat> and as the listing agent, uh, work with the seller to find out what uh, from the HOA, how much the, the total uh, cost is to transfer uh, ownership. We've been noticing uh, people have been selling the houses that they bought one year ago from a builder. And there's still capitalization costs. You know, these are uh, costs that the association is trying to backfill as reserves. And it could be 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. There could be some money in there. And then it's like, well, who pays for that? So you as a listing agent, you're responsible to contact the HOA, give them a call. They'll forward you to someone that, that handles that and say, hey, uh, I'm, a, I'm a listing agent. I'm selling this house. Uh, what's the total cost for the transfer fee? And, and is there any capitalization costs? And they'll tell you, yeah, it's going to be, I don't know, $655. Okay, now you have that. And that's where you can relay that information whenever they're submitting you an offer. Uh, and you can put that in agent remarks as well and say, hey, uh, the HOA states that uh, the transfer fee with capitalization costs $657. Okay, now everybody knows. And during the negotiations of the initial uh, offer, you can then go back and forth and see how y'all want to pay for that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so that's my presentation. Uh, any questions? I know Janelle, uh, thank you. Uh, Join us late. Uh, not sure if you you caught up with everything. And Fernando. Yes, ma'am. Where do we find these then? You sent me a link. So is this, will this be added to the link that you yes. sent me automatically? Yes, yes. I, I'm the one that, I'm the one that usually post all the links. Uh, okay. Uh, 
Yeah, usually I, I put it in. Um, I, I have it's on the link of the uh, tur training folder. Uh huh. Uh, let me see here. Here it is. Web webinar links. Uh huh. And after I, because I have to generate it and and record it and all that. But once right. it's done, I put it in here. Okay. And you sent me that link, so yes. I should find it added. Like I don't. Yeah, you like should. Where, it yeah, you just give it as a favorite. Yes. Okay. And yeah, there's I, a, there, there, like when you select this, or or I can resend it to you again. But when you mm -hmm. select this, here's a little star, and it says, uh, uh, "Save it as a favorite." Okay, and I think I have it in my favorite, so automatically I'll be able to see it as you add things to it, right? Yeah, like right now it's blank, but I will add it after I'm done, and then I'll have. Okay. Then I'll have it in here. Yes, ma'am. So it'll be a 226. So I'll have to let you know and make sure that I do get all these. Uh, okay, sounds good. Yes. And I want to ask you before, uh, well, I should let Janelle. Uh, I don't know if she has uh, any questions or she might be busy. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you, Ms. Sherry. So, Mr. Fernando, I was wondering um, what the topic was. I've gone back to not getting these webinar emails for the past few months. So, I was wondering what the topic was to kind of see what I may have missed at the beginning. Sure. It's these right here. Okay. So, just a review of those forms. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You. So, I talked about um, the the HOA is a buyer. Uh, I'm sorry, the non realty addendum to be very specific. Like for example, if there's going to be a refrigerator in there, don't just say refrigerator. Say stainless steel refrigerator and kitchen. If there's going to be a freezer that they're giving uh, conveying with the house, it's white Kenmore freezer in the garage. You see how specific I am. Excellent. Uh, and then don't put not applicable and don't put zero, put $1. The reason why you put $1 or more is because uh, the, there are some lenders that will use all these things and will include it in their, they call it seller's concessions, and they'll include it all as part of the financing which can break your deal. Because what the lenders will do is they'll go, oh, this refrigerator is $2,000. Oh, this washer and dryer is $3,000. You see what I'm doing? That's the way the lenders think. But if you put yeah. $1, if you put $1, that means that the seller sold these things for $1 to the buyer. So now the lender shouldn't look at it at these things, the seller's concessions. And and I want to add, I want to add this too. Um, Fernando uh, and I were discussing we could put serial numbers and model numbers right. if we find them like yeah, what this, yeah. The more specific you are, the better. Because like in my house, I have two refrigerators and one freezer. And typically I see that very often. So which refrigerator are you talking about, right? I see every room with mounted TVs. And you're going, well, which TV are you talking about, right? So there's these things. So the more specific you are, the better. Mm -hmm. Good questions, guys. Good questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, do you uh, log into Facebook, Janelle? That's my homework for summer. I'm going to set that up. So no, okay. I'm not using it actively. Because uh, you can uh, use uh, this uh, scan me QR code and then uh, join uh, our Facebook private group. And in here you can see all the meetings that we're having and our events that we're having. Like I posted this webinar on here as well. That way you know when everything's happening. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Sure. Well, these are good questions, guys. Okay. Um, anything else before we wrap it up? Well, I do have a question, please, Fernando. Sure. So oftentimes, um, I Danielle will help me with things since 